I am Julie and this is Julie Saws Her Own Clothes. Today is the reveal of my first full length winter lined coat. I'm so excited about this. Uh, I, this is a collaboration that I've been doing with Stacey J Studios. So yes, I'm just going to get into it and I'm going to share a little bit of footage with you of uh, my reveal of the Mallard Court and then I'm going to come back to you and talk you through how it was created. And here we have the Mallard lined Court. You can see it has an inside pocket that wasn't intended. I burnt the lining with the iron and had to cover it. So it's a happy accident, but it fits my mobile phone in nicely. I'm just going to bring that down so I can show you a little bit where it finishes. It literally is just above my knee which I got it there because I took maybe half an inch off the bottom. Um, I just love the style of this court. I think it's modern. It's definitely seasonal on trend. It is straight from the pattern instructions. I cut a size 12 and made no alterations. I did do a couple of very small additions and I'll talk you through that when I actually sit down and give you a bit more information about the court. But even fastened up, I'm quite pleased in terms of how the pattern looks and I just think it's a beautiful winter coat. I'm just wearing it with some nice woolen tights and my shorty boots and underneath I have my new skirt. So this is what I used the rest of the fabric to create a matching skirt to go with my new coat. I'm rather chuffed with it. It's a simple earline skirt that just looks nice with my little Marlow cardigan that is my go-to cover-up. So it looks quite casual. It looks nice with my with my low ankle boots and with my little heeled boots. And I really think it is a very cute set. When I put it with my coat, there you go. That is my little outfit for winter, me made. Very simple, hasn't even got a hem band, it is literally got a fearsome that just tucks in and then it is invisible zipped up the back. It's a skirt pattern that I've used before so it was already cut out and very simple to put together. Okay, so Annie is now wearing my mallard and the skirt that I made to go with it. Uh, I'm just so chuffed with the finish of this. I'm going to put a picture here of the inspiration and why I chose this fabric because I'd seen 
I'd seen a quote that I, I just couldn't get out of my head and thought, oh, I'd really like that. It's my kind of style. But it was like, it was £2,000 and that's just not my price bracket for a... Yeah, it just isn't. So I thought, do you know what? This is a great opportunity to make my own quote. And when I came across the mallard, which is from the... The pattern is from the sewing revival... I just thought I'm going to try and make it. So I set about looking for some fabric. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take this off of Annie for a minute. And I'm just going to show you the fabric in a, a little bit close up. So it's a Italian wool. And if you can just see, it's actually tiny little hound's tooth pattern on it with this big flock Hound's tooth overlaid on top of it. I find the weight of this really lovely and it certainly helped with the construction because it had a lovely sturdy weight to it. But what I did find was when I made the pockets, the pockets are designed to, so this flap on the top should be loose but I stitched it down because the fabric's quite stiff and it was just kind of sitting up rather than laying flat. Um, but I'm going to go through the sizing with you. I made a straight size 12. I also, uh, there's some different options to choose from in the style. There's the full length coat and then there's a cropped jacket. And there's the option for the deep patch pockets or the welt pockets, I believe. Um, I went for the deep patch pockets. They're much more my style. And I lined the pockets as well, which is in the instructions. Um, and I think because it's, um, because it's wool, having that lining, when your hands are in and out, it'll stop that wool from stretching out. So yes, that's a really nice touch to the to the pattern. The length is designed for, I think it's five foot six and I'm five foot five and a half. And it was literally landing on the crease of the back of my knee. And when I was sitting down, it kind of, I could feel it getting trapped in my knee and I just wanted it to sit just above uh, my knee. So I took half an inch off the bottom of the, of the court. Um, I think I probably gave myself a lot of aggravation then because I didn't do the same with the lining. And then when I went to stitch the lining together, it just, I didn't realise what I'd done wrong. And I sawed up the lining. I tried on the court and I had like a, a bit of pucker where it was just, it wasn't sitting right. So I undid the entire seams around the um around the bottom of the court and then I thought do you know what I'm gonna unpick the stitching on the lining of the arm and I'm go gonna go in and out through the lining of the arm so that I could get the bottom of the court right I wanted to be able to see what I was doing from the outside and not be stitching it from the inside so that I could get that really nice and crisp and make sure that the pattern was consistent all the way around. So I decided to hand stitch the hem together and the instructions are um, are to kind of leave a gap in the bottom of the lining to go in and out and bag the court. So I, I did it a little bit differently and I come in and out through the arm and actually I haven't stitched the arm back up yet because I just wanted to wear it and make sure that it was actually how I wanted it to look before I finally sewed it up for the for the last time. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like on the inside and then you'll get an idea of what I'm chatting on about really. So the... Okay, so here we are. Here's the, what it looks like on the inside. 
and it's all fully lined and then I literally just that's how I get into the all of the seams I wanted it just as well I did that actually because I, I did add something into it so I literally just need to hand stitch that and, and then it's all finished um, but I wanted to show you how I get in and out of it um, because when I connected and, and uh, stitched the lining to the outer court, I put it on Annie to see what it looked like and make sure that everything was lined up and nice and neat. And I found that the shoulders looked a bit odd and I think it was because of the stiffness of the, um, like the weight of the fabric with the flock i'm going to show you a picture because i did take a couple of pictures it just didn't sit right with me so what i did i went online and i just did a little google on shoulder pads i didn't want shoulder pads that were obvious i wanted something that would just kind of go into the shoulder and almost disappear into the shoulder i looked at lots of different styles of shoulder pads there, there's lots of kind of really thick bouncy ones I didn't really want that I ended up going for this which is a layered shoulder pad I then turned the court inside out again put it on Annie and then I laid this over the top of the the shoulder of the court and then I literally just measured this is quite a large one and I probably come down cut about that and I just cut round what I felt would be a nice fit on the court and just lined this up with the arm psych is it called the arm psych with the sleeve of um head and I hand stitched it down lightly across the center and then across the bottom layer the, the the real bottom layer of this i then hand stitched down onto the head of the sleeve and then i turned it the right way around tried it on and the difference was incredible so these were quite inexpensive. I will put a link to the company that I bought them from. I literally got a pack of 10 um, and they were just a, a few quid. So I will put a link uh, in, the, in the description of where I bought these pads from. And they are, they're just, they don't make any noise. They're not they don't feel ultra synthetic or bulky and I think they just sit really, really lovely um, and just help the shoulder to keep to keep its nice shape. So hopefully you'll be able to see from the original one what it did look like before I put the shoulder pads in. So when I <laughs> when when I was kind of using the steam to create um to steam down all of the seams it was it took a long time it took a lot of steam to get it to actually find its memory for that so it didn't kind of bounce back from that shape and I did find using a wood block holding it on for quite some time with a little bit of pressure really helped and it, it just created really nice um really nice seams that that don't bounce back that they're, they're nice and flat and i think it just helps with it just helped to really get the shape that I wanted and to make sure that I was lining up the pattern on both sides of the of the front of the court 
uh, even on the sides it's really well lined up so i would suggest if you are making a court with a a kind of prominent design on it that you really take your time when you're laying the pattern pieces over the fabric and really think about where your notches match up does your pattern match up for me for my very first full length fully lined winter court i am more than delighted with what i've ended up with the sleeves just sit perfectly they they don't you know i've paid a lot of money for courts and then found i'm having to go into the lining and pull the lining up because it's sticking out under the under the edge of the cuff i don't get any of that as a um as a pattern it was very easy to follow the instructions i found the process really quite straightforward in the step-by-step -step guide was very thorough for me and definitely gave me every bit of information that i needed the fabric came from stitch fabrics i'll put their links in it is x designer it's italian wool flock it's beautiful beautiful quality i just love it and and i had enough i bought three and a half meters and i wasn't i wasn't sure how much i would need it did say two and a half meters for the full length court but you don't want two and a half meters when you're doing a garment you've never made before in case you make a mistake and need an extra bit so i did buy an extra meter and actually that was really handy because i thought i'm gonna make a, a little skirt with it and actually i think when they are on together it looks really nice i really like that it, it kind of is a bit of a suit if you like um so i'm chuffed with that that literally is just an airline skirt from the sewing bee make your own wardrobe it's that's not what it's called i'll put the the name of the book i think i've showed that book in a previous vlog but i am chuffed i took a long time figuring out what to do about the buttons uh, i wanted some nice oh, i don't know what i wanted actually i spent hours and hours searching for buttons I couldn't really find anything that I felt I wanted to put on here. So I ended up thinking I'm never going to get this finished if I don't just get some buttons on there. So I did end up with some very plain standard buttons. Uh, and actually, I do think they look really nice. I didn't put a button on the very top, which I think the pattern to show a button right on the top because i'd never wear it buttoned right up if it's called i'm a scarf girl so i'll put a scarf uh, underneath the collar so i'd never wear the court buttoned all the way up so i just um placed five buttons the first button that i placed actually was i marked where it comes across the bust because i didn't want any gear so I didn't want to button here and here and then have it gap at the, the widest part of my bodice. So I made sure that one of the buttons was here and then I spaced the buttons out from there. And I think it's probably going to be worn and worn and worn because I genuinely love it. It's just the right weight for an autumn into winter caught but i'm just chuffed can you tell can you tell that i'm chuffed that i've made myself a wearable warm stylish court that i i love i really love it so uh i am now going to share with you my reaction to the sneaky peek of stacy's mallard and i can tell you now it looks completely different to mine and I think the whole purpose that we wanted to get from this 
collaboration was to show one pattern you can create so many different looks so in terms of that value for money i think the mallard is a real great pattern and go across and watch stacy's reveal of her coat because i think it is absolutely bang on before i push off and get on with other things today i want to do my small channel shout out so this is the small sewing channel hashtag that sam from second girly and christine from gemini stitch has created and this week i would love to give a shout out to chrissy conley and it's chrissy conley making stuff i'll put that on the screen i'll put a link in the description i watched her um release i watched on sunday uh she's invented a new type of trouser now that it just i just loved how she went about that whole process um she was actually attempting to make a pair of trousers that are on my autumn plans so i was watching with interest and actually it was re it was really interesting um how she pulled that back from the brink of a failure to a success i think was really great she's a very new vlogger i think she's got one two three four she's got five vlogs out and she has 29 subscribers she definitely definitely is one to go across and have a look at and 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 give her a, a subscribe and help her build her channel but please do go along and give her a little bit of help to get started and now i'm going to hand you over to uh, my view of stacy's sneak peek and then i will catch you next time so hope you enjoyed uh my mallard reveal and yeah comments if you've got any questions put them in the comments please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already do subscribe we've got lots of exciting plans coming up in the next um few months so i've got a really busy schedule of videos to release so take care catch you soon oh I see where you took that inspiration from. Oh, yes. Oh, wasn't expecting that. Love the fabric. That is amazing. Oh. I'm zooming in at that to see the more of that fabric. It's gorgeous. And she turned her back on me now. Ah. Oh, I just got a sneaky peek. <gasps> that is amazing. I know it would be, but that is just amazing. I love what you've done there. You can see it's a mallard, but boy, have you put your own stamp on that. That is, that's just, oh, and you've done the different pockets to me. Yes. I could never do that. Just, just saying, I could never do that. And they are. I'm losing words now. Yes, yes, yes. See, Stacey, one day I'm going to be that good. I'm going to be that good one day. Ah, oh. love it.